Good morning and welcome back. We are talking about millennials this morning. Often when you hear that term, some people think self-centered, materialistic, uh, maybe uh, a little bit self-entitled. This man thinks a little bit differently. Joining me now, Peter Sherman, former MPP and author of this book, Millennials Boomer Bust, How Gen Y Will Save the world. That is a bold statement. Why save the world, millennials? It's, uh, first of all, I think the world needs a lot of saving. Mm -hmm. And secondly, my generation hasn't done such a great job. I'm, I'm the leading edge of the boomers. The boomers were, still are, the major cohort in our society, but now the major cohort in the workforce is millennials. So mm -hmm. your generation is taking its place and you have a job to do. <laughs> and that is get us out of debt, get us out of conflict, and save the world. And I have great optimism. So let's talk about who falls into this category of millennials. 1970 is the first year that you could consider yourself a millennial if you're born in that year and it ended about 2000 so the top end is 37 and the bottom end is 16 very important group mm -hmm. now baby boomers think the Millennials may be a little crazy. <laughs> my my colleague baby boomers do think Millennials are crazy. They think that uh, essentially what you do is you walk around with a smartphone in your hand and you, you play all day and it must be Candy Crush or something like that. That's what they know or you're on Facebook. Yeah. And that's some of it but it's not much of it. Mm -hmm. it I think that uh, essentially your generation, the Millennial generation or Gen Y as it's sometimes called, uh, is the connected generation. You were born into a time where we had this technology and you use it to collaborate in very positive ways so that it kind of levels the playing field. I think yeah. it's a very positive thing. So Peter, how do we bridge that gap then uh, between the different generations and help them work with one another? Well, the good thing is that uh, from a, a, a parent-child perspective, um, you've bridge the gap yourselves because as we all know millennials stayed home longer lived with parents longer and it also took their cue so millennials watched for example as parents and grandparents lost some of their retirement savings in the uh, 08 09 recession mm -hmm. and uh, as a result of that you've become good stewards of money you have more cash in the bank than any other generation and um, it looks like you're going to do well you also don't trust the old institutions so you're trying to reinvent them and make them socially responsible all of that is positive you know what's interesting is talking about politics we saw in the latest federal election voter turnout at 68 percent yeah. which shows something that guess what the younger vote is turning out now do you think it is specifically to Trudeau or do you think there's an uh, regenerated interest in politics I think part of it is Trudeau but I, I don't think it was particularly Trudeau that inspired that younger vote I think it was younger people saying we're going to take our place kind of like if I can use a word Woodstock was in <laughs> 1969 when my generation was uh, 20 years old give or take five years and uh, that was a statement by 500,000 people in one spot that said we're taking over and I think that uh, in Canada the 68 percent says people who are having babies who are buying homes who have mortgages to pay and who want a future and are optimistic about it said we are going to take and make a change and we're going to cast our vote and see what we can do sure coming from the world of politics I want to get your take on the latest Vogue spread uh, you haven't seen these pictures yet. Justin Trudeau uh, appearing with his wife Sophie uh, and, and sort of high fashion, uh, high fashion politics. And do you think that the younger generation needs to relate to him in this sense to be able to be pulled into politics or do you think it's the other way around that he's trying to change his image for the older generation? Well I don't know it's obviously an image change on the part of people who are handling him or they wouldn't have let him do that kind of mm -hmm. spread because uh, people at his level don't do this on a singular basis they don't say I think I'll do Vogue. You wouldn't have seen Stephen Harper doing no, that one. No you certainly wouldn't have but uh, you saw somebody buying a picture of Stephen Harper in the nude recently oh, yes. so there are all kinds of things that politicians will do. Um, <laughs> in this particular case I think he reaching out and appealing on uh, a very base level to a broad section of people, probably mm -hmm. younger people uh, to a large degree. Um, but it's not about Vogue. It's about what you're going to do for the country. Absolutely. So there's so much more. If you want to check out the book, it is available now. Millennials Boom or Bust. All the information is on our website, breakfasttelevision.ca. Thank you very much, Peter.